Now, if you happen to be working with Photoshop CS5, then you have another option available to you for hair masking, and that's using something called Refine Edge or Refine Mask. And for this, we're going to be using an image which I've called Hair Masking 3, which you'll find in the Resources folder. Because the Refine Edge filter can use up a lot of RAM and can sometimes be very sluggish, I'm going to be working on a low res image of 100 dpi just to keep things fairly speedy and for this reason I've included a low res version as well as the high res version in the resources folder. Usually when you look up hair masking techniques in CS5 or a fine edge or a fine mask what you'll normally find are fairly easy examples of how to use refine edge or a fine mask to depatch someone's hair. It's either a brunette on a light background or perhaps a blonde on a dark background Either way, there's a high amount of contrast and their hairstyle is usually uniform all over. And that's the reason why I've selected this image because you have these sharp, crisp edges around the top of the head and yet all this wispy hair on the left-hand side. And I not only wanted to show you how to use Refine Edge in CS5 to mask out someone's hair, but how to get around some tricky images where you may have to use several layers in order to get the result that you're after. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer by hitting Command J and create a new layer on top of it by hitting the new layer icon and filling it with my usual dark green color which I have here in my foreground. So what I'm going to do is just to dump my foreground into this layer, I'm gonna hit Option Delete and drag this layer underneath my duplicated background layer. So now I'll select layer one and I need to get onto my wand tool. So the quick key for the wand tool is hit W and just click anywhere on the background here. And you can see we've made a selection of the, a rough selection of the background, the studio background. Now what we have to do is come up to select, similar, and what that's done is it's selected everything that's similar in color to the studio background, including this little gap here in between the arm and the waist. And of course you can play around with the tolerance of the magic wand, and I've got a tolerance of 40. Now what I do is I invert that selection, Command Shift I so that we're no longer selecting the background, we're selecting the model. Now we can do one of two things. Now that we have a selection here, we can either go up to Select and click on Refine Edge, for which the quick keys are Command Shift R, and up comes our Refine Edge Options box here. Or if I hit Cancel, what we can also do is, if we hit Add Layer Mask and create a layer mask from that selection, we can go back up to Select, and instead of having Refine Edge, it is changed to this other option called Refine Mask. So I'll click on that, and up comes our Options box. And I'll quickly explain how this works. If I click on Show Radius, it will show us the radius around which the computer has intelligently decided how wide a radius it needs in order to encompass the image. For example, around the top of the head here, where, where we have these really sharp edges, we just have a very thin radius, whereas around this long wavy hair, wispy hair, we have a much wider radius. And that's because we have smart radius ticked here. If I untick that, then we just get a very broad radius. But we want smart radius ticked. And we don't need to see the radius anymore, so I'll just untick show radius. And under our view options here, we have a few different options. We can either see our selection on a white background, or black on white, and quite a few other choices, but my personal choice is to keep my view options on on layers, and that way I can see the green background, which gives me a much better idea as to what my mask is actually doing. For example, if I had this sitting on a white background, then I wouldn't really be able to see the flaws in my mask. 